Baker with ArcadePartsAndRepair.com. I've been uh, working on this uh, K4800 Wells Gardner chassis, and I've gotten so many emails from people um, wondering about the filter caps here, how to replace them, uh, because these here don't have a 10 millimeter lead spacing um, on the actual boards, and you're going to find that on the K4900s. Uh, Wells Gardner K4600s and there's a few different ones that have that so we're going to go through the demonstration on how to actually replace this um, so that way you can actually use the standard modern 10 millimeter lead spacing of the new filter caps nowadays uh, because you don't have the um, the same spacing as what these would have been uh, 40 years ago so we'll first have to remove this old one So that's the old one, and we'll just put that off to the side here. Um, we're going to clean these up just to make sure. So now that you've got that removed, um, this particular uh, filter cap, we're going to replace it with an actual modern 10 millimeter lead spacing. So one thing you'll find on these is that this is basically the positive, this is the negative. This one and this one are only stabilizing uh, um, supports for those bigger caps. So there is no, if you look at the pad here and here, these are completely isolated from the negative and the positive, so they don't actually um, <clears throat> attach to anything on the board other than just themselves there, so they're isolated. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take this and we're gonna actually put it in this positive hole and this island over here. That way it'll sit a little better on the board and these smaller ones like that allow it to actually fit in there. So and they still sit on the board so they don't hang off so basically it'll fit between here and here and then what we have to do is we have to bridge this lead to the ground to the negative here and we'll actually make a wire to go across there to actually bring that uh, over and then we just fill in these other um, spots at that point so we're going to actually solder on here, so I'm going to remove all the solder off there, so that way we have a good uh, all brand new solder on that too. Right now we're going to actually bend these leads out just a little bit so they actually have a little tension to hold them in. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you. 
So now that the filter cap's installed, um, we're going to actually, um, I'm going to actually just take the solder right off of this lead here a little bit so I can actually put on <clears throat> this wire here. Basically, I made this wire so it's actually going to bridge the two together. And I'll go through and show you here. Now, I actually, some of these wires, this, this pad and this here, this is all ground in this area. So if this were to actually touch that, it wouldn't be a big deal because we are creating a ground on this pad on this isolated island. So, but if I'm going to bridge something across the board and I'm crossing other traces, I usually put the... Uh, uh, put shrink wrap tubing around the actual jacketing because the jacketing when you heat up the wire to solder it It tends to pull back away from Itself so then it exposes more copper and that's not a good thing there um, So basically what we're going to do here <coughs> is Attach this one So I want that all the way down against the board at that point. So once I solder one side down, then I'll basically be able to maneuver the other side and I'll attach the other side at that point. Now this side, since there's no leads there, I'm just going to uh, have that right down against the board, and then I'll solder that whole lead up against there. I'm using <clears throat> I'm using 18 gauge solid wire, solid copper wire there for that, since obviously we're running a fair amount of voltage and stuff there, so I don't want to shortcut that. I want to have enough. Sometimes you want to have this actually pressed down tight so you can use a tool there until it cools off a second. And now you basically have your ground here on the capacitor is bridged over to the actual lead on the capacitor. So now we have the negative here and the positive here of that filter capacitor. And that's how you actually install um, all of these actual uh, filter capacitors on arcade monitor chassis that don't have a 10 millimeter lead spacing <clears throat> on uh, the chassis already. So if you got any questions, please feel free to leave any comments, but that should uh, take care of that. And that'll work on all the uh, chassis, you know, whether it's a 4600 or 4900 or the 4800 like this being the 13 inch and any other chassis that you use for that purpose. So have a great day and I hope this helps you out. Thanks, and this is Peter with ArcadePartsAndRepair.com.